All right, the last video that we're going to have this unit is about writing and naming formulas for acids. You probably hear in chemistry lots of different times like hydrochloric acid, probably the most common. And um, obviously that has kind of a different sound to it than what we've looked at so far. So, far. so anything that's an acid has to be a compound that contains hydrogen. So it's going to contain at least one, but it can have multiples. And um, when it's put into water, when it's dissolved into water, then it forms the hydrogen positive. Hydrogen's a positive one ion when it's dissolved in water. The general format for any type of acid is going to look like this. Now the X in that general format represents either a monoatomic. Mono could mean, mono means one, so one atom like chlorine, bromine, iodine, oxygen, sulfur, just a single element, or it could be a polyatomic. So you could have hydrogen with sulfate or phosphate or any of those negative charged um, polyatomic ions. The N in the problem is a subscript that you're going to put on the hydrogen. So our negative element is going to, you know, negative one, negative two, whatever it is, we need to have the correct amount of hydrogens, and remember hydrogens are positive, so that when our plus and minus is combined, they still need to equal zero. So these are very much more the ionic bonding uh, than covalent. So you will not be using the prefixes mono, di, tri like you did in the previous video. So you want to think more along the lines of ionic bonding when you look at naming and writing formulas for acids. Now there are three different rules for naming acids and it depends on the ending of your negative ion. So if the ending is IDE, hydroxide, cyanide, chloride, fluoride, bromide, any of those um, elements off the periodic table, then what you're going to do is you're going to take the acid, the acid name is going to begin with hydro. So you'll start with the prefix hydro. Notice it's a dash, so it is a prefix. We're going to add to that the stem of the ion, or excuse me, the stem of the anion. So for instance, if we are doing chlorine, we would say hydrochlor because we are going to take the ending. Normally we would have that IDE ending, like hydrochloride, but we are going to take off the ending IDE and we're going to put ic. So hydrochloric and then we, we tack on the word acid. So I kind of already did the first example for us really quick. We have um, HCl, so to start off we need to notice and know here that Cl has the IDE ending. Because it comes off the periodic table, we change it to chloride. So our rules say we add hydro, so here's hydro. We take the stem of our anion name, so chlorine. We're taking just the main part of that name, and then we're adding ic. So those are the three kind of check off steps here that we have to have uh, in order to have the correct name. So let's try one more. This is just S here for sulfur. We know it's an acid because it has the H, always, you know, begins with H. And so our rules say that we're going to add hydro, so we'll start with hydro here. And then S is sulfur, so we're going to keep the sulf, okay, the main stem of our word. And then we're going to put ic at the end. Sorry for the bell. And then we have, for our final name, hydro sulfuric. All right, hydro, because it's sulfur. So in this case, we actually keep the whole word just because it just sounds better. Um, hydrosulfic, I guess. There's, there's people who would call it hydrosulfic, so that would be um, all right as well. All right, let's take a, another rule. Now, we don't have every uh, negative anion doesn't always end in IDE. We have plenty of ITE endings like sulfite, phosphite. We have uh, chloride. We have all sorts of things that end in ITE. So the rules are different. This time, we're not going to add a prefix. We are just going to take the stem of our negative, the stem of our anion name, just like we did before, and we are going to add the OUS ending and then the word acid. So there is no prefix on this one. For example, if we do SO3, we need to know that SO3 has um, is sulfite, and so if we're taking uh, this one and renaming it, we're going to take the you know main part of our anion name, which is <coughs> excuse.
excuse me, um, which is sulfite, and we are taking that, and we are taking off the I-T-E. Instead of sulfite, it's sulfurous. So we have sulfurous acid, and we know that the O-U-S had to come from something that ended in I-T-E. So if we're looking at this and going the other direction, anything ending in O-S-E had to be um, I-T-E originally. So this would have been sulfurite. We know that's sulfite, just as a grammatical issue. Uh, HNO2, so we know NO2 is nitrite. And so if we take the ending of, you know, the main root part of our anion, we have, uh, we would take nitrous acid. Nitrous, some of you might have heard of that. So we have the nit part, nit, and then O-U-S for our ending. So again, again, there's some, you know, kind of have to get a feel for what grammatically sounds okay. So as long as you're attempting and making the right ending changes and so on, I'm not um, too incredibly worried about spelling. If you add an extra letter or take something extra out, again, as long as I notice that you're making an attempt to, to change the endings in the right way, you're fine. Last rule for acids deals with the ones that end in eight, like sulfate and phosphate and chlorate. Carbonate, we have lots of A-T-E endings on our polyatomic ion sheet. For this one, you are going to take the main part of your anion name and you are going to add the suffix ic onto the acid. And if we look at uh, a common one here, nitrate, one of the first ones you needed to memorize, instead of it being nitrate, we take the A-T-E off and add ic instead, and so it's nitric acid. Different from nitrous acid, you see the O-U-S had to come from an ite ending. Ick endings came from uh, an A-T-E. Notice there's no hydro in front of this, so that's how you can notice the difference between hydro with an ick means it had to come off the periodic table, whereas if it doesn't have a prefix and it has the ick, then it had an A-T-E ending. MnO4, this is one we haven't used a lot. This is permanganate, A-T-E, and so this one, if we take the A-T-E off and add ick, we would have permanganic acid. So that's what we're doing there for those A-T-E's. Now we need to be able to write the formula as well if we uh, have the name. So for example, we're going to be working backwards. We know this is rule number one because it has hydro in it and it ends in ick, and rule number one had those kind of pieces to it. So that means that this had to be an element that ended in IDE. So we need to take a look at our main root word here, cyan, and what do we know that has cyan in it and ends in IDE? That would be cyanide, right? So this is going to be H positive with a plus one and cyanide from our root word there for a negative one. And then we need to look at do the charges balance. We have a plus one with a minus one, so in this case HCN, no numbers needed would be fine. Now this one, carbonic acid, notice we still have the ick, but there's no prefix. And so this tells us that it's rule number three. And rule number three says it had to end in A-T-E, our original anion. So what do we know? Kind of has that main part of carbon, but it had to end in eight. Sounds kind of like carbonate to me. And so that is the CO3 with a minus two charge. So we have our plus charge from hydrogen, the CO3 minus two for carbonate. And now the question is, these are not balanced. We have a plus one with a minus two. And so hopefully by now, you know that we have to up our number of hydrogens to balance out the negative. So we need two hydrogens, H2CO3. And lastly, we have chlorous acid. And OUS is rule number two. So this originally had to end in ITE. So we have chlor, okay, chlorite was the original um, anion. Chlorite is ClO2 with a minus one. And again, here's a plus one with a minus one. They're already balanced. So HClO2 would be the final formula. We're going to look at just a really quick about bases because honestly you've, you've already looked at bases when we did ionic before. 
A base is any type of an ionic compound that is going to produce hydroxide. So if you have hydroxide within your problem, OH, and when it dissolves in water, it will produce hydroxide ions, OH with a minus one charge. And so that is considered anything that's basic on a pH scale. It's going to have hydroxide ions in it. And we're going to name these the exact same way we did with all of our ionic compounds. So we're just going to run through a few for review because you probably had some of these on past worksheets. NaOH, our rules for ionic, we have to name our first element. If it's a, you know, polyatomic ion like ammonia, okay. If it's, um, for instance, a uh, transition metal, we'll still need Roman numerals. All of those rules still apply. Sodium is not a transition metal, so we just name the positive, we name the negative, we're done. So this is just going to be sodium hydroxide. We have Al, OH in parentheses with a 3, so we know that Al is aluminum. Aluminum is not a transition metal, so we can just name this aluminum hydroxide. And now we're going to kind of flip-flop. We have lead, Roman numeral 2 in parentheses there, hydroxide. So we know from that that lead has a plus 2 charge, and we know that hydroxide is a minus 1. So we need two hydroxides in order to equal out the lead. And your final formula should have that OH in parentheses with a 2. And lastly, lithium hydroxide. Lithium is a plus 1 charge. Hydroxide is a minus 1. And these are plus 1, minus 1 already cancel, so LiOH. So anytime you're doing acids or bases, we, we have to look at charges because these are definitely more ionic bonding than covalent. Um, if you have any questions, definitely please be asking as we are getting ready then to finish up the trimester and you know getting ready for finals.